Thank you. Uh, obviously, I would have been happy for him to stay up here all day and continue to exhaust all of your questions. But one, I figure I probably should answer a couple today. And also, the uh, president has an event here shortly, so I want to try to uh, work through as many as I can. Uh, and with that, I'm actually going to start with Jeff Mason, since I believe it is uh, maybe your last day and my first. So uh, with that, Jeff, take it away. Talk just a little bit about how this was, how this will affect, how this change will affect the press office. And can you speak a little bit for Sean about how he's feeling and how he took this news and how he made the decision to resign? Uh, I, you know, I'm not going to speak for Sean uh, in detail. I can say that uh, he understood that the president wanted to. Uh, bring in and add new people to the team, and Sean felt like it would be best for that uh, team to be able to start uh, with a totally clean slate. And I think it, I want to echo what Anthony says. I think it speaks volumes to who he is to be willing to do that and allow uh, Anthony to come in with a, a brand new starting place. And I think you know he's served the president loyally and admirably he's going to continue to stay on uh, for the next several weeks uh, through the transition and I'm sure he'll be happy to answer some of those questions directly yeah. Yeah. Hey, sir, first of all congratulations on, on the job um, can you clarify where the president stands on the issue of pardons is he considering pardons uh, for <coughs> figures in the Russia investigation and does the president believe that he has the power to pardon himself <coughs> Uh, look, I'd refer you to the comments that have already been made by the outside counsel uh, in terms of their actions. The president maintains pardon powers like any president would, but there are no announcements or planned announcements on that front whatsoever. Does that power to pardon himself? Does he believe that he has the power to pardon himself? Like I said, uh, I don't have anything to add beyond what the outside counsel has already stated on that front. In his interview with the New York Times, he raised questions about Robert Mueller. Does he endorse his legal team's efforts to undermine Robert Mueller's credibility? Uh, again, um, the president has um, absolutely nothing to do with any of the uh, allegations that are being made. I think he's maintained that and he wants them to complete their process as quickly as possible so that we can move on from uh, the ridiculousness of uh, all things Russia and Russia fever. So, so but, but to, to, the, to the question that I asked, does he endorse his legal team's efforts to undermine the credibility of the special counsel? I'm not aware of those details, and that's something you would have to ask. That's something Times you would have to ask energy. his legal team. I'm not part of that process, so I wouldn't be able to. On health care, what does the president want the Senate to vote on next week? I, I think he wants to. Uh, as uh, Mark Short stated earlier this week, and as we've repeated many times before, the president's uh, preference is to repeal and replace Obamacare. And uh, we haven't been shy or quiet about that, and those uh, intentions have certainly not changed. John. How much arm twisting is going on vis-a-vis -vis the health care bill? The vice president had a lot of conservative groups over today. Those conservative groups announced that they will actually be scoring votes next week on the motion to proceed, which I believe is unprecedented. Uh, I don't think anyone here has made a secret that uh, this is a big priority and that Congress should do what they've been talking about for the last seven years. It's time for them to get in there uh, and repeal and replace Obamacare. And these groups recognize that. Their constituency uh, that support the groups that they have certainly recognize that. And they're supporting uh, the mission of their organizations and pushing and putting pressure on members to get the job done. Nothing yeah. beyond that. Something too, but just about the organizational structure now that Anthony's uh, come in. Uh, the press secretary and the comms secretary used to be pretty much co-equal reporting to the chief of staff. Will it remain that way because the, there was some move toward making the communications director sort of a deputy chief of staff and then the press secretary and the comms director would report to that person. So do you still report to Ryan's or do you report to Anthony? Uh, I think that Anthony said it uh, better than I can in this capacity as we plan to work together as a team. And certainly our goal is to work together to pr promote the president's agenda and to do that not just with the two of us, but our the entire press comms office as well as the entire White House staff. Do you report, do you report to him or do you report to Brian? Uh, we all serve the pleasure of the president. Callie. Questions for you. Um, number one, when you talk about, there were some comments made by a senior uh, administration official this morning on television talking about the motivations of people who are part of Bob Mueller's uh, special counsel investigation. Do donations to a political party, if it's not the president's party, 
Does the president believe that disqualifies those people from being part of this special council? Uh, I don't know that we're uh, putting out a litmus test, but again, questions regarding uh, that, I would direct you to the outside council that's running that part of the process. Question about national security advisor McMaster. Does the president have confidence in his national security advisor? Uh, I have no reason to believe otherwise. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. Sure. Sarah. Alex. Um, the president clearly doesn't want uh, special counsel. Well, he said he doesn't want special counsel Robert Mueller to look into his finances, but the intelligence committee is already looking into uh, financial data from the Treasury Department. Is there anything the White House can do to stop that? Uh, look, again, the president's point is that he doesn't want the special counsel to move beyond uh, the scope and outside of its mission. And the president's been very clear, as have uh, his accountants and team, that he has no financial dealings with Russia. And so I think we've been extremely clear on that. Blake. Sarah, Sarah, last time when it became apparent uh, in the House, the first go around on the health care bill there that it was going to fail, it was pulled at the last minute, within the last hour or two. When you look at both the repeal and replace potential and the repeal only potential, the numbers suggest that they don't have the votes and it's set up to fail. Why, why does the White House believe this time around that a vote should proceed? Again, we're continued to be focused on repealing and replacing Obamacare. And we're not going to stop until we can continue to move that forward and get that done. Uh, not only have we wanted to commit to that, but frankly, a lot of the members of the Senate and the House have not only committed, but campaigned on that. And it's time for them to step up and get that and the done. Is that a vote should take place at some point next week on some sort of a bill one way or another? I don't think you can repeal and replace Obamacare without a vote. So I think it would be a pretty Sarah. necessary part of the process. Sarah. John. Sarah. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I just want to get something straight. Earlier in the week, you indicated you, the White House was not opposed to outright repeal. And then based on your remarks today and Mark Short's two days ago, you seem to favor uh, repeal and replace. Does that mean you are against the outright repeal bill that Congressman Biggs has introduced? In not House? against, but again, as Mark said earlier this week, our preference is to repeal and replace. Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, two questions for you. Can you take us through the process of how the president decided to hire this new communications director, Anthony uh, Scaramucci? And moving forward, um, what will his role be in terms of objectives that the president wants him to meet? Uh, as Anthony said, uh, he's known the president a long time. He's been a uh, loyal supporter of the president's. Uh, and Anthony, somebody who has come from nothing and built an incredible, I think several incredible companies. And he's in one of the most successful, smart people that the president could put on his team. And the president recognized that and wanted him to be a part of this process. I think very early on, he was a very strong advocate throughout the transition. And this has just been part of the process to bring him inside the White House. Follow up on uh, Rob Mueller. Does President Trump have confidence that Robert Mueller will conduct a fair investigation? Uh, you know, at this point, I don't uh, have any reason to see otherwise, but I have not had a chance to ask the president, and I'd want to get clarity on that before I comment. Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Um, I just want to certainly starting January 20th, this administration has cycled through uh, has seen departures of a deputy chief of staff and national security advisor, the communications director, and press secretary, um, several other roles inside this building and across the street. Um, what does that say about uh, sort of the efforts to staff up this administration at the start? What has the president learned about his team, about himself as president? And can you explain sort of that very high turnover rate that we've seen over the last six months? Uh, I, you would have to ask the president uh, what he's learned in that process. And um, I can tell you, though, I think what we've all learned in that process is that working together and working to accomplish the things that the American people elected the president to do is our focus. It's what we come here every day to do. We're a lot less focused on uh, the who, but the what, and we're going to continue doing that every single day. Jim? Do you not see that as, as a chaotic Sarah, thank you, turnover? Sarah. Uh, no, I don't see it as chaotic. Jim. Sarah, is the White House concerned? If you want to see chaos, Zeke, you should come to my house early in the morning when my three kids are running around. That's chaos. This is that. <laughs> Sir, news this week uh, concerning the Attorney General and uh, the resignation of Mr. Spicer could have the effect of alienating or demoralizing uh, Trump loyalists uh, both in and out of the administration. 
Uh, I think that Trump loyalists, particularly within the administration, but certainly across the country, are energized by the accomplishments of the president in the first six months. Uh, stock market's at a high, jobs are growing, regulations are coming off, the country's becoming more secure, the border's becoming more secure, immigration is down. Uh, I think we have a lot of things to celebrate, a lot of things to be excited about, and I think our morale is pretty high. Sarah, Take one, Sarah, last. Sarah. Steve. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. Promotion. I'm wondering if, if you approach this new role with excitement, with trepidation, um, with apprehension, and if you could reflect on these last six months and one day on what you've learned about how, how it is to speak for the president. Is it, is it a tough job? Have you found it easy? Uh, I think it's uh, probably uh, the one of, certainly professionally, one of the greatest honors that any person could ever have to work in any capacity within this building and to get to do that up here in such a public way and speak on behalf of the president uh, is absolutely an honor and something I will cherish and hope to do my very, very best every single day and be as open, honest, and transparent with you all as humanly possible and will always work to uh, operate at the highest level and certainly with the most amount of integrity.